Could you start your thought over? Sure. I I got my 98 um, EIN today. This is Pat. Yeah. And uh, um, I told him that I had a trust, but I didn't think it was my foreign grantors trust, and I really needed my foreign grantors. And um, he said he would look into it. He wanted to know what my um, Social Security number was and my birth date. Um, and he went to check on it. Um, and he came back. He, I, he asked me a few more questions, but he was very agreeable, and he said he would uh, change the number for me. Um, and he said, don't worry about the 66 number. He took care of it. And um, the whole conversation lasted maybe five or six minutes, which I was pretty shocked um, because I had been having a lot of difficulty. Well, maybe the easiest path is just go get that wrong number and then go back and correct it. I, you know, I really think um, if you have a, a number in hand and you go in and, you know, ask them because he had said, well, I, I think it's okay. And I go, no, I really need the um, the non-interest bearing foreign grantors trust. And I impressed non-withholding. Him, non-withholding. Or non-withholding. And I impressed upon him, you know, twice. And he really took it to heart. So, um, you know, there was something from that uh, movie too that I also noted. Uh, that that Interstate 60 movie. You know, I got his, he got his grant on the third time he asked. And if you if you watch the courtroom scene, it was the third time that that judge got ordered to show his finger in his nose. <laughs> Maybe you got to ask three times. <laughs> well, I think I've called at least 10 or 12. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that adds up to more than three now then. And I mean, the last time I called, I gave without, I mean, in care of my street and without, um, you know, the city and state. And this time uh, when he asked me, I just gave him my address. And just gave it straight. It, wow. and, he, and he changed and he changed everything. Huh. And, and he apologized for the mix up. So, I mean, it was just, I mean, I was doing a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I keep reading that one rule that's kind of confusing to me that it says as a business you can only apply for one per day or something like that. Some kind of. Yeah, maybe they only give out 198 per day. <laughs> that's what I was thinking when I read that. I said, maybe that's all they give out per day. <laughs> <laughs> and you just happen to be the lucky one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Today's the 98 recipient. <clears throat> well, I, you know, I read that they open up at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I happened to be up very early, so I, I called in at like 7.30. And I called Cincinnati first because that was uh, the number on the letterhead. And she said, no, you've got to go through Philadelphia. And, you know, she said, if you call right now, you'll get right through. There's no wait time. So that's what I did. uh, That's Philadelphia time, I guess, at 730. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, they open at 6, so they must not have been heckled by a lot of people yet, so. Mm. It's Patrick. I'm on the line now. Hi, hi Patrick. Pat, hi, Patrick. Uh, Pat was just telling us she was successful getting her a 98 EIN number today. Well, and that's uh, the thing. you, you got to keep it. You gotta keep after it if you want it. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't you tell them what you did, Pat? Well, I, I heard. Cu- I heard. I heard. Oh, okay. okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I was listening. <laughs> okay. 
I, I'm in the same situation. I got a number. It's the wrong number, but at least I got a number, and I can I can use Pat, uh, Pat's method. Yeah, just trade it in. <laughs> yeah. Do you have the phone number? Yes. The phone number is on one one of the examples that Patrick has out there for the SS4. Okay. It's the so 1099. You can, call, you, can call, you can call them up early in the morning there and check on it and see out of Philadelphia and see if it is a ballot, okay? Is what you will want is a non-withholding foreign grantor trust EIN. And that's I, not, that's when I I yeah, called in early not, in the morning. Yeah. You're not going to be getting uh, one to where you're going to be withholding any, uh, doing any withholdings on it. You're going to be paying as you go. Okay. You're not going to be operating with this damn messed up system out here of, well, we'll operate on credit and basically uh, we'll get an insurance policy and uh, protect us in case we don't live long enough to pay it off. That's for the birds. Can I cancel yeah. my car insurance? When you get this understanding about it, yes. Okay. okay. You don't need insurance. Okay. It's all basically operating per their plan. Okay. You don't have free choice right now if you're operating under their plan. Mm -hmm. Just like in the Adjustment Bureau, the movie. At the very end. Basically, they rewrote the plan, and there was nothing on the paper. <laughs> there was no map left. They had the free choice at that point in time to make their own plan. Yeah, that's all a plan is, is a plot, is a road map that the government has laid out that you have to follow. Well, you don't have to follow that. You express that, and you come out of their system. So you can look up plan and uh, plot in uh, Anderson's Dictionary and then go to the other words that it refers to there. Okay. Map and uh, I forget what the other word is. Uh, depiction or whatever. Description? Des yeah, description I think is what it was. Then look it up in Anderson or in Oxford Universal Dictionary. You'll find more about the word uh, plan in there. See, it's like a maze, okay? They've laid out a uh, systematic program that they want you to follow. Well, you don't have to follow that if you've got free choice. Mm-hmm. And you're supposed to have a free choice. So, and all of this uh, basically is right in the Bible. Okay, like I've tried to tell people, the Bible is a law book. Okay, just like uh, that Sermon on the Mountain, the five uh, loaves and the two fishies. Okay, feeding five thousand people. What a hoax! That was no damn miracle. He gave them the 1099 A, B, C, the 1096, and the form 56. That was the five loaves. The two fishes were either the 1040 or the 1041 to get your return. That's how he fed the people. He gave them the knowledge to basically feed themselves to get their inheritance. The veil is coming down faster and faster every day if people just open their eyes and uh, see what I'm talking about. 
people that are in jail, okay? You put in a uh, cancellation of debt for like, I don't know, uh, 10, 25 million to free up the person that's in jail. I told people back uh, a year or two ago about uh, going to the Secretary of the Treasury if you got uh, in trouble with debt. We still go to the Department of the Treasury. They're the number one servant. Just like in the parable in uh, there that when you forgive the debt at the first servant level, he'd better forgive the debt down the line. Well, the state is a secondary servant to the Department of the Treasury. The credit card company is also tied into the Department of Treasury because they have to gain access to your funds, to your ings, I-N-G-S. And they have them tied up, so they're tidings. And you forget the debt, you remove the bondage over those ings, and now you can use them as credit to make a payment out of there. And basically, like on the Sermon of the Mountain, you go fishing. So basically, you got fish ings. There's metaphors all throughout the Bible that you have to look for. And they did a good job of hiding a lot of this stuff away from the people and getting the people to believe in hocus pocus uh, uh, magic out here in the process. And everybody just walks away in awe. Oh, wasn't that so neat? Any comments? Come on, I just drew a bunch of shit at you. You ought to have a few comments here. <laughs> yeah, it makes it makes a whole lot of sense. And I think that's the secret to the way way you go about it is that you you do these metaphors, which gives you a connection from one dot to the next. Yes, and see, you've got to start looking at these things, asking the question, why? How did that happen? What was the gist behind it? Yeah, that's I mean, the only thing that makes any sense to me, I don't know whether it makes any sense to you or not, but basically uh, that's the only thing that I could come up with that makes any logical sense, as uh, Mr. Spock in uh, Star Trek would say. Anything else is illogical. <laughs> Hey, Patrick, what you just said about doing the thinking about why and how and, you know, how does it work and all that, that's the quadrivium. That's yeah. something that we weren't, you know, that's, that's the, the second layer of thinking that we're, we're really not taught to do. We weren't supposed yeah. to. It wasn't in their plan for you to do that. Right. Yeah. We learned the trivium, but not the quadrivium. Yeah, you got to break away and you want to have free choice, you make the choice. You don't go by what their choice is that they put in front of you and say, well, this is the only choice you have. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. i got more choices than that. I can make up my own choices. 
I don't like your plan. Four. And a plan is just like a map. Well, hell, that map is wrong. It never got you to the treasure. So that treasure chest map is totally wrong. <laughs> so you make up your own map. Also, copyright. You put the word copyright whenever you put your thumbprint on there. This is under copyright. That means you are the only one that has the power to make a copy of that. It's not for general publication or for the general public usage any longer. You don't That's need to go to them to copyright anything. That's ludicrous. To go to the servant? Bullshit. The master never goes to the servant. The master tells the servant. So we just put the copyright every time we uh, fingerprint something. Just say that this is also under copyright. Okay, okay. Yeah, look up copyright. Look up these words. Start looking at these things. Don't wait for me to tell you what the hell they mean. I'm having a hard enough time trying to keep myself in line. Oh, we can hear some background noise. It sounds like someone's washing dishes in the background. If, if uh, Could you star six yourselves out? So we don't get the echo and the various noises in, and you then when you want to come in and ask questions, star six to turn your mic back on. Thank you. You know, you were talking about the fingerprints. I was on eBay the other day, and I I looked at I noticed something on a it was some kind of instrument. It looked like it was a bite mark in the back of a check. So it looked like a, a dental impression. Well, that's, yeah, that's a way of embossing. Yeah, if you don't have the hammer and the the chisel or whatever to emboss it, uh, you can use your teeth, I guess. Yeah, I was surprised to see it, though. Well, that's a creative person. I would think that would be a one-of-a-kind, almost, uh, well, yeah. But I mean, even if you just had a Mickey Mouse uh, embosser, Stacy, it's your embosser. Emboss it. Just like you can't copyright your name, okay, because there's other people out there with the name. But you can copyright your fingerprint. So when you sign, fingerprint, and then emboss, and then it's under copyright. Now you just protected it and said, hey, public, this ain't your damn document anymore. It's not in your plan. It's in my plan. Hmm. Now, back to the 1099Cs. Okay? Like I said, okay, uh... You go to, like, the parable about the servants, okay? The master went to the one servant, forgave him. He was supposed to forgive the secondary servant his debt, and on down the line. The secondary servant was supposed to forgive the debt of the third servant. Now, if they don't, 
what happened to the first servant. He got in trouble when he didn't forgive the debt, when he was told to. And part of that uh, statute, all the way back in uh, 18, I forget what year that was, I know I posted that up there about going to the Secretary of the Treasury, if uh, the courts did not uh, uh, forgive the debt, you went to the Secretary of the Treasury, because he was sitting over the treasury of we the people of America to free up the assets. There was never supposed to be a debtor's prison in this country. But yet we've got the biggest debtor prison in the world right now. Because people don't know how to cancel the damn debt. Make it out for more than what it is. Okay? And say in the description block what you want that debt to be used for. If you don't know what the value is uh, in block uh, two or three, you say, state that. Send that into the Comptroller of the Treasury in care of your Social Security person. List the court case that basically, or the charges that you're in there on. They will go and pull it up. At least they're supposed to go and pull it up and settle the debt. But you'd have to write a cover letter and address that to the Secretary of the Treasurer or to the Comptroller of the Treasury when you send that in. Yeah, all these people that are in jail, basically they're sending all this stuff to the wrong place. They're going to an attorney. He ain't going to get you out. He's making money off you. And half your friends, they're out there fighting damn laws that they know nothing about because they're corporate laws. And the living doesn't fall under the corporate laws. Your credit card company, if you're having problems with them, go to the controller of the currency. Notify him. I redid, re-looked at uh, trying to get a new vehicle. I'm going to General Motors on two vehicles. I got the VIN number. I got the window stickers for them. I'm going to cancel ten times that amount of debt for that vehicle. I'm going to cancel the debt. That frees up that amount of money. That money in line three then now becomes the payment to General Motors. And what does it say in block seven? It says fair market value. It doesn't say asset value or basically what you're going to, you want money back. What you want back in line seven is going to be the vehicle. You're making the payment for this amount of money. I want the vehicle of that value or a comparable vehicle of the same value. That's what I'm putting in my description block. Here, here's the payment. There's no debt. I canceled the debt behind this. So now this is a free and clear payment. And then you've got three days to give me the vehicle. Because I offered payment. That's after they get the del delivery of that. Right. Okay, same thing with credit cards. Same thing with the 
uh, uh, utility company. You cancel that amount of debt. You free up that payment. Now you get the payment to them. Okay, if you've got the services, you get them the $150 for the bill. It's not coming out of your back pocket anymore. It's coming out of your inheritance. You haven't lost anything, have you? Because you really didn't have it in your hand before. You just took a little piece of that fish and put it on a piece of bread and ate it and basically fed yourself. Magic. Hocus pocus. Hmm. All of these are the same way, okay? You just have to think them through now. But they all fall under the same scenario. And then, like, if the credit card or the state does not comply, you file a charge in with the CID and also with the Secretary of the Treasury or the Treasury Department stating that that you always put down that state in care of the Department of the Treasury dash comptroller. Because he is over all bonds out here. Even the state bonds, they have to get permission to access our account there at the Treasury. And if you've offered to settle the damn thing and they've refused the offer, then there is no charge. And they're going to be punished. They're going to lose out all altogether or whatever. Which in some cases they should be totally lose out because most of it's all under fraud anyway. And we filed with 3949A or a narrative? If you need to, okay? Okay. But your first choice is to go and put that in. You copy that. Uh, if you're running into problems, you get that copy of that 1099C, the B copy that you sent to whoever, and you send it to the comptroller of the currency. stating that they have not complied with the three-day rule of set-off. Now, at the state level, okay, like what you calculated out yesterday, Tom, was uh, about 18.7-something. 75. Yeah. Well, just go strictly times 20. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So at the federal level, it's times 10. At the state level, it's times 20. And then all others, you can basically pretty much bank on that there are times 100. And these ten times and the hundreds were in the Bible also of making war. Hey, Patrick, what are you referring to at 10 times and 20 times and 100 times? Is that the bond? That's the amount of bonds that they've written against line three. Oh, okay. Now, here's a good one for you. 
I mean, just, just sort of take a, a sort of a glance at that form. Why are the numbers where they're at? Two, three, four is description. Five is basically yes or no. Six is bankruptcy or whatever. Seven is basically fair market value. What is seven? What do you do on day seven? People, come on. You're supposed to rest. Rest. You're supposed to forgive after seven years. Seven. Okay? How do you get to seven? Well, in line two, if it's ten times and you minus line three... What do you get? You get seven. I mean, think illogically. (laughs) (laughs) Out of the box. Don't stay in the boxes. Come out. See a little enjoyment in, in starting to see some of these things. I mean, is that that form basically in itself is so big when you really look at it? It's got so many different little pieces to it for a simple little form. So like I told the people yesterday, if you've got your EINs, either one of them, your estate or your uh, non-withholding foreign grant or trust EIN, you've got your Form 56s in place, okay, you should have uh, uh, the Form 56 filed to either Ogden or to Cincinnati, and uh, it You've done a Form 56F for your estate, okay? Uh, you would send that to uh, uh, San Antonio, Texas, Isn't to the IRS Austin? down there. Austin? Or Austin, Austin, Texas. Yeah. yeah. One of those cities in Texas. Yeah. Okay, and so now you've got your Form 56, then all you have to do is your uh, 1096, uh, your uh, 1090, or your 1099C, your 1096, get that into the uh, place that you have it recorded, and then uh, you turn around and do your 10, either the 1040 or the 1041. And if you've got your EINs, you should be using the 1041s. If you don't have your EINs, then you use the 1040 uh, initial filing, and you put down just in block uh, to where it has uh, the amount that's been withheld from you or in uh, the block to where it calls out the 1099s. You have no income. Understand that. You have no income. Income is for the corporate usage of the Federal Reserve banking system. You're not using that. That is for the people that use the bonds and the insurance policies. The debt money system. You're not 
out there using the dead money system, even though that's what they're handing you, but you're getting ripped off in the process. So you still have no income. So everything on that form in that regards is zero. Stop informing on yourself and putting yourself in the harm's way. Okay, and then you should get your return back, okay, on the 1040 uh, and the 1040X. And you use a 1040X for all additional filings during the year for a 1040, okay? And on the 1040X and on the 1040, when you have a return that is supposed to be coming back to you, you have... Uh, the place on there to uh, have that directly deposited into your local bank account. <clears throat> Strongly recommend you get a non-interest bearing checking account, okay, at either a local bank, American Express, something of that category with no, uh, you do not uh, accept the FDIC insurance, you want no insurance. You want no thrills. You don't want their free frying pan. You've got the money to pay for it in your inheritance. There's nothing free in this life. You take their free gift and you're going to be in their system. So how free is that? It's not. Patrick, we went and talked to a lady today with our W eight and the bank we went to had no idea what we was talking about, man. We're um, setting up an account? Yeah. Well, basically, don't set up an account until you get a damn treasury check, and basically, you flash that in front of them and say, hey, I got a treasury check here. I want to deposit. Either I'm going to deposit here or I'm going down the road. I'll pay you for the services. You don't try and open up a checking account with no money or with very little money to start off with. But if you walk in there, like with a $1.5 million dollar, treasury check, shit, they're going to fall head over heels over their ass to try and get an account set up with you. Of course. See where I'm coming from? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's always, there's always some place out there that will open it up for you. And you don't go to the Local, local, basically, if you need to, I want to see the vice president. Um, Patrick, about the 56s, what um, template are we using? Whatever template you want to use, okay, right now. I don't give a shit, okay? I've told you enough information out there. You could adjust them however you want to. Okay? I'm not going to sit here and hold everybody's hand on trying to put up a new template every time uh, we've added additional clarification to this. Okay? I've tried to get you to the point to where we are right now with the templates that I put up there about using the without, the CO, uh, our name, the way it is. That's what you use. And that's off the template for the 1099C. So you make it appropriate change.
And basically, you don't need to change the Form 56. If you've got a Form 56 in place, when you do the 1041, you change the name and the address on the 1041. It's got two boxes there. Hmm. To change the name and to change the fiduciary's name and to change the fiduciary's address. You're not changing fiduciaries. You're just changing the way the name is formatted. But it's all right there on the 1041 form. Okay, that relieves the load off the 56 form a lot. I was looking at the WH forms, Patrick, and, and you have three of them out there, which you did within a few days of each other. One for APO customer, one for Just APO... Just do whatever one you want. I don't give a shit, okay? Okay. I don't want to hear any more about it, okay? You take what I told you, and you make it fit. You be creative, okay? Just because I threw a template up there, I, that is not cut and iron. I'm not Moses. I didn't go to Mount Sinai to get the damn uh, Ten Commandments cut in stone. Those are examples. They're not the. They're not stone etchings. I, I understand that. I was just okay. wondering what what uses you made for each one of them. I don't know. Okay, okay. Any questions on the 1099-Cs? We, from we yesterday's still... audio and from today, from what I told you about today, that should give you a pretty good idea, but if you got questions, ask them now. I well, may not be here tomorrow. You had us, uh, you know, we're, we're working on our mortgage and our, our lunch money, as we're calling it, and uh, we're save, saving the more complicated ones for later. I would imagine that in uh, we still can use the 1099-Cs to collect past taxes that we have paid and past utility bills that we have paid, and as well as receipts. Yes. So the And there the fair market value is whatever we paid out. Yes. yes. And basically, you, you cancel the debt behind those, you free up that, and then you can either claim it back as abandoned property, fill out a 1099A, or in some cases, depending on the situation, just complete the rest of the 1099C and leave it there. Okay, you have to uh, think about some of these things. Has the uh, time frame run out on the thing? Okay, now like in a mortgage, Basically, at the end of three years, the the bonds, the initial bonds for that were supposed to be uh, settled. But they got you to sign on the other side of the contract under a fraudulent contract. So all the principal and interest now, when you go in and you cancel that debt, that that has been settled. Okay, now if they still want to try and come after that house, you're going to turn around and you're going to have the control of the currency come down upon them. Hmm. Because now they're committing fraud against the uh, corporation, the Treasury also. Hmm. So there's lots of people who've been, poor, even though the debt's been forgiven, they've been foreclosed on the lien. 
especially people who want to bet Chapter 7 bankruptcy. And so we report that as fraud this way. Well, yeah, you have to get it reported in, okay, but you have to cancel the debt, okay? Yes. And see, just because you went through bankruptcy doesn't mean it's fully canceled. In fact, the ba bankruptcy instructions are very clear that uh, unless you specifically request it, the liens are not removed. That's right. And they only tell you that when they give you the final decision. They don't tell you that up front. Well, I found they this don't even tell you the final decision in all cases. They uh, sort of rush you through, and then you've got half the time you've got a damn attorney there that he's uh, – rushing a bunch of this stuff through and he's not working for you he's working for the corporation sure. yeah I, I have I have a friend who went through that in her actual court judgment that the judge did say that unless you ask for it uh, we don't cancel liens right but they you're, can't. You're, you're right they won't sometimes they won't even tell you that yeah you've got to go for those for those you've got to go to the controller where the bonds initiated from, the Department of the Treasury. Right. <clears throat> that's, that's what I did today. Yeah, see, we've got to, like, when I'm going after those vehicles, I got General Motors uh, dash CFO on one line. Underneath that, I've got C slash O, Department of the Treasury, Comptroller. Because that General Motors is under the jurisdiction of the Department of the Treasury and the Comptroller for the Department of the Treasury. Mm -hmm. All the states are the same way. The counties, everything basically is going back to your special fund account by way of your Social Security trust fund account. Your stock certificates under your Social Security number or your stock certificate under your certificate of live birth number. You're a stockholder. That's why I name it We the People Stockholders. And we've got two shares of stock, our Social Security share of stock and our uh, in the trust fund and then our certificate of live birth share of stock in the special fund. In 1920, they set up the independent treasury with the trust fund and a special fund. But it was just one fund. Each. Now they did the same thing with the military and it's a military fund account. And you, the people that have honorable discharges, they have a certificate of uh, a stock certificate in the form of that uh, DD-214 form under their selective service number. That they have been honorably discharged. Anybody else that has a selective service number can't access that because they don't have a certificate. And then one person can come in that has the knowledge of this and basically act in proxy for all the other shareholders that don't have a damn clue out here. Yeah, you go to a corporate board meeting, okay? You got a million shareholders. But if only one of them votes, the one vote carries. 
There's no dissenting votes because nobody knew they could have the right to vote. So it's one to zero. And this is the way we can use uh, uh, the the system to cancel debts for others. Yeah, you can come in under proxy, okay? You but you can use your account in there to cancel the debt for them. Right. But they can cancel the debt themselves. Teach them how, okay? Don't do it for them. Teach them. They want out. They want something. They had got to work for it. If they don't want to work for it, fuck them. Let them stay plugged into the system. Let them stay in their little iPod there in uh, the movie Matrix. At the very end, in number three, when the oracle asked the architect, who is the engineer, and basically uh, the engineering of all our kings into debt, okay, when we come in as a re-engineer, and re, we do a re-engineering for our benefit. They've engineered it for their benefit, so we're going to come in and we're going to re-engineer it for our benefit. We don't like their plan. But the oracle at the end of the movie in uh, Matrix there asked the architect, what about the others? He had to say, if they want to come out, they can. But they've got to want to. Mm-hmm. Well, I figure I'm canceling the debt for the taxes that are owed because he filed income taxes, but when I'm driving around in my new car, (laughs) if he wants one, he's going to have to figure out how to get one. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, he's going to have to work for it, okay? He is, and he's going to have to stop filing income taxes. (laughs) He's going to have to learn. He's going to have to come and listen to Patrick talk for a change, okay? Not these other nitwits out here that basically don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. I told them years ago, you've got to know how the money system works, and basically none of them know how the money system works. And then 99% of them don't know how to read the damn Bible. They're out there thinking Yahweh's going to take care of their damn ass. It's all within you. Well, you have he, to gain the knowledge and understanding. He thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> well, that's the problem, because basically they've been inundated with all this bullshit, and it's not only during this lifetime, but basically uh, what their friends and everybody else, their teachers and everything have put onto them. Right. Well, I think the whole society's been dummied down and... Well, they've been conditioned. Yeah. But see, when did you stop filing taxes? I don't think I ever started. (laughs) Well, basically your husband or whatever, somebody was filing in the family. I don't know. I stopped about I don't know, 10 years ago. I started okay, doing so about... You, so you did, okay? Mm-hmm. So he was following your example. I stopped filing them back in 1885 when I started hearing about this. But it really didn't come into focus until this past couple of years. Yeah, it's all voluntary. Just like filling out the census form. 
There's only one thing you need to tell that census person. How many people live here? That's it. All the rest of the shit on that census form is garbage. They're trying to get into your life. <laughs> life, okay? Stop letting them in. I get so irritated with my mother. She sits there and she'll talk her head off to some of these people, giving them all sorts of information over the phone. All the damn garbage mail that she gets. She's the biggest mail recipient in the damn county. She gets more damn junk mail. And then, I mean, hell, she goes through I don't know how many rolls of uh, forever stamps sending replies back to these people. And it just... It's just a progressive bullshit session. They're getting more and more information on them all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you you don't want any insurance. So you have a life insurance policy or whatever. Any type Mm -hmm. of insurance policy, you take that policy value, you multiply it times 10 or up to even 100. And you cancel that amount of debt, and then in the description, you demand the residue back. Why do they have the new price value on the certificate of title to the vehicle? Because they have basically placed $20,000 insurance policy against it. Your driver's license is an insurance policy, probably in the neighborhood of at least $100,000. So you go in and you cancel at least uh, $2 million in debt against the driver's license. And then in your description, say that this license is to be terminated. And any residue is to be returned to uh, you. Fair market value, you have no idea what it is. And you do a a 1041 on it? No. Just send a 1099-C in. You're also going to send it in to the IRS. They will check on it. See, you're only using a 1041 when you have a value that you're claiming back. For that new vehicle, I'm not going to send a 1041 in for that new vehicle. The IRS can't send that vehicle to me. But Mm -hmm. basically, I'm making the payment to General Motors in line three, saying, here, This is now the 10% tidying, so it now is free and clear. Here is the credits. I'm making the payment for that vehicle. You now have lawful credits. Now all I want in Block 7 is the vehicle. You've got three days to give it to me. And when you, Patrick, this is George up in Seattle. When you when you're doing that for 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 a vehicle down where it says account number, that's where we put the uh, vehicle VIN number. No. No, you put down your uh, estate SSN trust fund certificate, and then uh, your Social Security number, but just the last four digits of that Social Security number. That's the account that basically that is being ledgered against. The debt. Okay, you put the VIN number in the description of what you want. Here, I'm making payment for this vehicle, but if this vehicle is no longer available, I want a comparable one of the same value. 
You've got three days to get me one. I'm offering you payment. You have just made a contract with them. See how simple that was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your utility bill is the same way. You're making a payment out of your account at the Treasury, not out of your back pocket. They have three days to settle that. When you go in to buy something, say you went into the uh, local car dealership, you give them uh, the full payment for the vehicle. Say you've got three days to deliver that out to me. If they don't deliver it to you, they're in breach of the contract. That's another term for C, contract. <laughs> See, I told you 1099 C's, okay? You're supposed to learn your A, B, C's. The C has more functions than the A or the B. They just have one function. See, most people wouldn't pick that up, only a wit like me. <laughs> An enlightened person. One that's totally outside the box. Don't want to be in the box. I'm not ready to be buried yet. And then even then, I still don't want to be in a right. box. <laughs> told my mom that basically I wanted to basically just take the postal digger, dig a hole, stick me, throw me in head first, then stick a cherry tree up my ass. <laughs> At least some good may come out of it. Hey, Patrick, this is Steve. Um, yeah, Steve. I ordered the uh, the forms like probably two or three weeks ago. I'm going to have to call them back. They said they would be here in 10 days at FedEx, but I haven't heard about the uh, – I haven't read the uh, instructions. What's that box six identifiable event code? It says A. I'm not familiar with that. Well, you can go online and download the form, the 1099-C, online at the IRS, Okay. Did uh -huh. you call up on the phone and order the forms? Yeah. Right. Well, go on to the IRS website and put another order in on the IRS website. Okay. Just make sure you put the right address and everything down to where you want it delivered. Yeah, I've ordered forms three times, and they came within 10 days. Yeah, usually now about mine, five. Yeah, that's about what mine's been coming, and I'm going to put another order in tomorrow. Okay, I'll I ran through order. quite a few of the 1099Cs trying to get the templates, my templates set up right for the printer. So I have no problem in using their forms. <laughs> <laughs> They're free, so what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Your template is great. Yeah, and basically if you can modify that and uh, and if you've got a good PDF program, yeah, you could change it around yourself. I just scanned it in and um, put my form in the tray, and it just it really came out perfect. Mm -hmm. And then you could do the same thing with the 1099A, and uh, then also with the 1096 form. Uh, those are about the only ones you really need to have those on. Uh, the 
1041. Basically, that you can do that, fill that out, uh, their form online or on uh, the PDF program there, so you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, well, I'm not. I'm sure you guys aren't going to be doing this, but basically, uh, I had a little problem on the 1041 form trying to get the uh, the 17 trillion dollars into line 24E, so I had to do a <laughs> different route. And now you need 170. Well, no, not on 1041. That that goes oh. on the 1099C. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't have any problem in putting that in there because I have the font in auto, so it'll shrink it down to whatever size it needs. That's how you do it. Yeah. I'm using Adobe Acrobat. Uh, even though I'm experienced with computers, that thing is sure hard to figure out. I, I don't like it. I, they've changed it. I've got... Yeah. Um, I used to have a better... Acrobat, but they discontinued it. I think uh, you'll find a lot better program out there in some regards if you stay away from those big name programs. The program that I use is Nitro PDF. I, I'm going to try downloading that. It's about forty dollars, right? I don't know what it is. Uh, they've got a couple different versions and uh, uh, of it. Well, Acrobat was a lot more, but I yeah. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Is it okay? Well, it's got to be okay because I sent my I sent a page a season today, but I didn't send in the 1096, so I can send that in tomorrow. Yeah, you need to try and get that in as quick as possible. I uh, normally. Basically, uh, in printing them out now, I'm sending, when I send it out to Ogden, uh, mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm sending the package out to Kansas City for the 1096s. And if, 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 even, if there's only, even if there's only one 1099C on the form, mm -hmm. I'm sending it out. I can send as many of those in as I want to. You can always get more 1096s. I you like know, it when they send me the nine C's too. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ten ninety sixes because they get the three hundred dollar stamps when they send those. Mm -hmm. Now, if if I need to put more information in the debt description box, can I send a letter, cover letter? Well, it all depends on what you're doing. Yeah, if you're going to a utility company or you're going to get a new vehicle or something like that or you're going to uh, cancel basically uh, an insurance policy or a court case, uh, I just, this last time, I just told them, hey, uh, if these things aren't processed when I send it into the court, I will see you in tax court. Hmm. That you think you're in a court right now? I will show you a real court. <laughs> That's the only court that I haven't been into in this country. I've been to every other damn court out there in some form or matter, but I have not sent anything into the tax court. That was the one that I should have been sending everything into. Because it's all about taxes. I don't want to go to court. Well, we won't. Um, basically, see when when we start putting this down in care of the Department of Treasury comptroller for the cancellation of all these bonds. Okay. You're going to be the plaintiff, but also the Department of the Treasury or the United States is also going to be up there as a plaintiff with you against the other person who's the defendant now. Oh, like Bank of America. Well, yeah, basically if they don't comply. Okay. When you give them the right thing, you cancel the right amount of debt, and basically they know they've got to do that, okay? That's the law of the temple. 
Okay. Temple law is basically that when you cancel the debt, and they see if they don't, just like in the parable that Jesus talked about, about the servants. You cancel the debt for the one servant, he'd better be canceling the debt for the other servants down the line. Well, I canceled enough debt for them. They certainly better. Huh? <laughs> I canceled enough debt for them. They certainly better. Well, but yeah, we need to put them down as being the one. And see, we, we've got to report on them. They're the ones. And see, when we do this, we're reporting them as having income. Now mm-hmm. they have to pay taxes. Now, the IRS will be after them to pay the taxes. Good. <laughs> That's why the the United States would be involved, and it's the United States of America would be involved into a court case, a tax court case against them. Okay. Because they're not paying their taxes. Right, that's what our payments go for, to pay their taxes. Yeah. That, that's what they use our mortgage payments and, for, And taxes. the fraud and everything else. And see, basically, uh, the United States, the IRS, can handle fraud better than we can. Mm-hmm. They know what to hand, take care of. That's where, read everything that's on that 1090 or that 3949A form. The embezzlement, the... Uh, the racketeering, the frauds, mm-hmm. it lists them all on there. Well, they just got slapped with a billion-dollar lawsuit. Yeah, but see, in most cases, we have not done the forms right. And basically, most of these people that are out here bitching and complaining, they haven't filed the forms right either. All these people that have lost their houses, mm-hmm. basically they could go back after them and get the money back out of their account and go and get a new house. In retrospect, they could? Huh? In in retrospect, they could? I mean, they could? Yes. I mean... Oh. All they have to do is basically go in and cancel the damn debt for, like, you want a million dollars tomorrow. You go in and cancel $10 million mm-hmm. in debt. You are the principal executive officer. You're one of the we the people of America. You're of age. You're over the age of 21. And basically for a man over the age of 25. So you are a master. You are a representative out here. And that means you are the principal executive officer of America. In that capacity, you stand a hell of a lot higher than some damn corporate president, Obama. Mm -hmm. He's just a corporate president. There was no king of America, but there was a hell of a lot of princes and princesses of America, but no king and no queen. Unless you call Mother America the queen, Hmm. Mother Earth. A mother always takes care of her children, her offspring, like a good mother hen. Okay, questions? Okay. I'm just looking at the WA, Terry. 
You had the three different versions. Is that for the three different levels, the crown? I told you to knock that off. Just fill out oh, okay. whatever you want, okay? Okay. I filled mine out, but I went back and just saw those yes. today. I was wondering yeah. about it. This is the second or third time you brought that up? Second. Okay. I gave you the same answer on both of them, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Patrick. Yeah. What is it that you're really trying to teach us, man? Because cause you've been doing this a long time. And, 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 and you understand it, you know, like no other. Of course, that's obvious. But um, some things you expect from us, and I ain't saying us as all of us, but I'm just speaking for myself, of course. Um, I'm just not on your level sometimes. So I'm well, what, what, are you, what are you missing? What, I'm, what, what, I'm, don't, what don't you understand? Okay, that's the question. What don't you quite understand? What I don't quite understand is uh, how to transfer from this state to the club. How to transfer it from, from there to the, to the other place. From what? From the from the state to the trust is what I don't understand how to do. Every, everything else I've, I've I've I'm I'm in the process of in terms of my things out, but the but the transferring the state to the foreign ground of trust is what I don't completely understand. Well, basically, you get it out of the estate into your back pocket. Okay, now you set up an account under the foreign ground trust number. And you deposit there. Okay. All right. You, you see that? You you do the 1099Cs with basically your estate EIN. Okay. You could also do it with your foreign grant or trust EIN and have the money sent to you. Okay. It's going to be put in your back pocket. What you do with it after you put it in your back pocket is up to you. That's when you would turn around and you would put it into your foreign grant or trust account to where they have no vision of it. You could put it in the coffee can in the backyard. Put your foreign grant or trust EIN on that one and say this is number one can. <laughs> you get it? You understand what I'm saying there? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm not I'm not here to belittle you or anything like that. I'm just trying I want to try and make sure you understand what what's going on here, okay? And I tried to break this down and get it as simple as possible. So I think that we've got it now. Patrick, can you also take that form 8832 and use that in conjunction with your foreign grantors trust and... Um, Yeah, you can set up a bank account, okay, under your foreign grant or trust EIN uh -huh. and have it directly deposited into that bank account. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't call out the EIN on that account number. It only asks for account number, the bank routing number, and the name of the bank. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's I, shit. I can't remember. But yeah, even if it did, even if it did have the EIN number, you just put it down there. Okay. Right, right. I've got that form. Yeah. But then there's another form that I think you can can you put the, like houses in it and cars and I mean, can't you just take all your possessions and put them in your foreign grantor's trust or no? Well, basically, if you don't register them into their system, it's in your system. Right. Okay. You you stay away from registering anything in their system. Mm-hmm. 
It's all now private. So, I mean, if you, like with your vehicle, I mean, if you ever got stopped, um, you're totally out of their jurisdiction. Yeah, if they have no jurisdiction over that vehicle, basically, uh, you can put, uh, but uh, down the road, I'm sure we'll get something from these guys uh, about identification. Mm-hmm. How do we have our vehicle marked so that they see these nitwits out here uh, don't come after us because we're going to come after them for false arrest if they try and harm us. And we'll take their bonds out. So you get harmed by these guys. You turn around and you cancel the amount of debt that you are harmed against their bond of office. And then you turn around and claim the harm that you put in block three down there in block seven. You submit that into the IRS. That you put it against their federal identification number, which is their uh, depository number, their postal depository number. And if you do have the officer's identification number, that sort of helps, too. You put that in the description block or the judge's uh, number or whatever. But you don't need to get all this other stuff that some of these other people have been trying to uh, find out and everything else. No. Basically, you turn around and just submit that right back in there as quick as possible and uh, get the IRS involved. So we don't need the bond numbers or any of that other stuff? No. Okay, good. You just put it against their, uh, where they're getting their damn mail at. Yeah, zip code. The IRS knows who's at that address. Sure. So until we get the identification, doing that enough times, we'll get the word around that they shouldn't mess with us. Well, basically just don't go out of harm's way and put yourself into that, a that's position right. to get messed with. Even within the system, I haven't had that problem. Basically, you're an official visitor, okay? Yes. We're here as an official visitor on planet Earth, okay? Our spirit is. So we're a visitor from the get-go. Our spirit came to this planet. Okay, it's not from this planet. The body was derived from the planet. But that is only a mechanism for the spirit to operate in. So you've always been just a visitor. That's why we need our 98 number. About visitor up there. Yeah, we need our 98 number for that nice badge. Well, whatever. You get some of this other stuff going, and then basically. The next step will come a lot easier. They may help you with it when you when you start showing that you know how to cancel the debt. Um, Patrick, on the um, could you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, on the um, if you're if you're getting remedy from uh, a, a policy agent who has uh, committed a false arrest against you, 
when you do the location, their address, do you do the corporate address of, say, for instance, if it was the highway patrol or the sheriff's office, or do you do the, their personal address? Do it, do it where the office is at, okay? okay. You're going after right. the office, not after the individual. Okay, all right. Yeah, you take out his bond of office, then he's out of a job. But, and all you need is the badge number. Yeah, the badge number and basically what office he's operating out of. Okay. And, All right. And then you can and then you can get his uh where the mail is delivered at that uh address. All right. And how do you figure out a monetary amount? Well, that's up to you. How what uh damage did uh Well, they do? actually I have did a they throw you in jail? I, I, Yes. I have a fee for for you know my right to travel infringing on my right to travel and um but actually I have a fee schedule that is filed on the county record so I can go by my fee schedule Well now see uh there again you filed that in the public didn't you Yes Yeah so that's in the public domain Wrong, wrong thing basically to do, okay? You want a fee schedule? You make up your own fee schedule, and then you copyright it. You put your thumbprint, and you put copyright on there. You emboss that, and then basically you give them a copy of your fee schedule. You don't okay. record it at the county in the public realm because now it becomes under public jurisdiction. And who, who okay. do you give a copy of it to? Well, the they give to that company? police officer or whoever's going to cause you harm to the oh, judge. Oh, at that very moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Have, a bunch of, have a bunch of copies in the car. Okay. Yeah. Have a bunch of copies of what in your car? Your fee schedule. Uh, fee schedule. I have another one that I, because I've made a will and everything, and I put my fee schedule in my will. Uh, the one that I found at the county records when I was first getting into this and, um, you know, studying and just um, <clears throat> that's what I was told to do, and I didn't know any better. Yeah, I but know. I did that's later, what, yeah. I later on, notary. I did make a whole yeah. another one that's private that's never been, you know, I sent it to the, Attorney General a copy, you know, with my thumbprint and everything on it. Was, it was private, though. It was on the private side, totally. And um, so I could use that one. Well, you got to realize, okay, everybody thinks that the county is uh, the base for everything out here. It's not, okay? It's just another damn corporation. It's the lowest level form of government control, okay? We the people set up the Constitution, which was a charter to set up the corporate United States of America, which then set up the governments, the charters for the state governments, which then set up the charters for the county governments. Okay? So we the people are the government over the charters. We're the ones that gave them the charters. You don't go to them and put your stuff into their public realm if you want to have privacy. You copyright your own material. You don't put it into the public realm. I mean, it's totally ludicrous. I don't know if you've ever gone through a copywriting process uh, or a patent process that the government has. It's ridiculous. You got to have 
so many attorneys. You've got to do all this search and everything else. You make up your own patent. You post it uh, in your records. You time stamp it and date it and everything. Now, if somebody comes in and basically out there, you can always bring that into court. That you go into a different court than what they've been putting people into. You go into a court of the United States of America. Not a corporate court. Or a 14th Amendment court, I should say. Okay, let's get back on 1099-Cs. Anybody else got any more questions on 1099-Cs? Expect every one of you guys to have one in the mail tomorrow for $1.5 million or thereabouts. A million I got dollars. mine out today. <laughs> okay. And mine, I'm, I think mine will be in tomorrow. Could we make it just slightly different than 1.5, or would it hurt to be all the same? Yeah, I'm just throwing that number out there, okay? Okay, I'm going to do 1.51. Well, do two <laughs> then. Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll be that different, okay. I was just trying to get it over one, okay? If you've got a bank account... Okay, then you can ha use the 8302 because if it's under a million dollars, you're going to get a treasury check back. Okay? Yes. But if it's over a million dollars, they will directly deposit that into your account that you give them. Do you expect we will have any blowback like the people with the A4V methods have where they, they when they're successful, usually some somebody will come back within six months, they give it back? But we shouldn't have that kind of a problem, I gather. Oh, hell yeah. They're going to come and take it all back away from you. Huh. <laughs> I'm going to spend mine first. <laughs> you, you put it under a rock. <laughs> If you cancel the thing, it's canceled. Okay? Yeah, yeah. They don't it's do that. It's a done that. deal. Yeah, what they, don't they were do doing that. was not a completion of the process. <clears throat> oh. They had a certain amount of time to try and complete the process, and they never completed it. Hmm. That's why they came back and took it back away from them. Because they didn't know how to complete the process. And they didn't do the 1099-Cs. I have a question for you. Yeah. I did a 1099-C with um, using the understanding that you had before the, um, well, what you have now. So I turned that in, sent it in Friday. Is there any way to amend that or just redo yes. it completely? Yes. Basically, you take that and you correct it. You put down in block two uh, the amount that of the debt times 10 at least. If it's at the state level, you multiply it times 20. If it's a credit card, you multiply it times 100, okay? You put down in block three whatever uh, 
the payment or whatever you've uh, invested in. That is your interest. You're the, and then see, when you cancel that debt, they no longer have an interest. You're the only one that has an interest in that value that's in block three now. It all belongs to you. Now, what you do with it, then, after you cancel the debt, is up to you. Okay. You can make a payment with it, or you can demand it all back. Well, I, I put it in for lunch money, so I put it so that I wanted it all back. Okay. Then, basically, you've... Uh, uh, need to put that value in block three and then ten times that value in block two and then block seven will be the same as what block uh, three is and you mark up the top corrected. Okay. Yeah, see, it's got a check mark up there to correct yeah. it or to void it out. You can void it out and start all over again if you want to. Void out the old one. But well, since I basically it you've got already. the one in there, I would just make the correction to the one that I have in there. Say okay. that this this is a correction to uh, the one submitted uh, on this date. Okay. Good. I will do that. Yeah. See? Very simple. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's what the instructions are for. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to keep telling you guys that, but <laughs> there are instructions on most of these things. <laughs> yeah. You're right. And then, program. Uh, yeah, the program. But yeah, the instructions, you need to be able to read between the lines <clears throat> on those instructions, too. So they are a little tricky. And they had to do it that way to keep uh, the ones that basically would uh, be depriments from finding out the whole truth the ones that could cause real harm, the ones that were not going to comply uh, with the law, the ones that are the rebels, the outright uh, revolutionary or re revolters of any and everything. You have to operate with some control, and that is the right and wrong scenario just and unjust and some of these people out here basically they just want okay any more questions Okay. We're done, Any guys? other off-the-topic subjects? I'll give you five minutes on those. Well, I, I was wanted to concentrate on what what you're talking about right now, not do the more exotic ones. But uh, uh, a, a problem that I have, which is a property that got sold on me and is now bank-owned. Can I just go to the bank and say I want it back and I'll do a 1099-C on you? Tell them to draw, draw, draw up a document as a payout and I'll pay that to get it back? You've already lost the property? Yes. Well, you turn around and you put a 1099-C against them, cancel the debt, and then basically make them pay you back okay. what they took from you, okay? You put them under, 
uh, you report them to the IRS. Okay? Let the IRS go after them to get that back from them. Okay? Okay. You don't try and get it back from them. You let the tax man go and get it for you. Ah. That's a service that the IRS supplies. Ah. See, it says internal revenue service. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, if I wanted to buy new property, though, let's say, and I want go to a bank-owned property, could I ask them to give me uh, equivalent of a payout so that I could cancel that? I have a question. Tom, um, no. Yeah. Let, me ask, let me jump on Tom here for a second. Oh, no. Okay. Don't do that to Tom. Yes. I'm going to jump on Tom. Okay? You just put in one for $1.51 million. Okay? Yes. Yes. You get that money into your account. Now, can't you go out and buy a piece of property? How yes. much damn shit do you need? Not much. Okay. Then start trying to make it complicated and get into their system again. Ah, that's what you don't like about it, getting it back into their system. Yes, and that's what you're okay. doing. You're trying to get back into operating in their system. Well, I've got to go to them. No, bullshit. Ah. I want to buy this just like the Amish do. You go and you bid up the price. Eight thousand dollars for an acre of land. Basically, here's the damn money. Uh, okay. Now it's mine. You don't need to record it. And if you do record it, it's recorded as private property. To where they can't put you don't have a certificate on that. If I want police protection, fire protection, I will go and contract with those outfits for that. And I will give them a two- or three-year uh, payment. Hmm. That just cleared up a lot of the things I was thinking about. Thank you. Yeah. You just want to, cable just, television, okay? You go in and basically say, hey, I don't want any of your contracts. I've got payment here. And I will give you a uh, sign up a three year contract with you, and here is the full amount. You don't give them a social security number or anything like that. Right, right, okay. Okay, you I was just give them the damn money. Okay. Yeah, um, Patrick, um, when I do the 1099-C for this uh, case, um, I use, do I use the case number as the account number for the debtor? Do you use what? The, case, the number. case number for the account number for the debtor, for the court or the, the Well, the basically, uh, was it a traffic violation or what? Yes. Okay. Uh, basically, is what I put down on mine was I put down my driver's license number. I don't have and one. Then you had I mean, one at one question. time, and it probably is still in the system, okay? From another state that was, uh, yeah, I never got one. I moved from Oklahoma to Florida, and I never got a Florida license. What did Oklahoma they put license? on the traffic ticket? Oh, they put um, your social security put, number. No, mm -mm, no, they didn't put my social security number uh, because when they stopped me, I just get, gave them my contract, you know, my right to travel papers. And um, so, uh, and I had went through a name change because I'm indigenous, and so I have my indigenous name change, and I showed them my name, my indigenous ID card, and um, they wouldn't accept it, you know. They put, it was it was false ID cell, and um, what else? 
Paul look at the Jesus. traffic ticket, okay? Look at the traffic ticket. There has to be some document that they could go and charge against. There has to right. be something that they could write bonds against. Now, it might be the VIN number on that vehicle. Okay. Okay, that's what you've got to look at. What did they charge? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how did they attach you to that charge? What was the attaching instrument that you have that was under subscription? And see, when you went in the court, you had to do a description of separating yourself away from that subscription. The only contract that you have out here is basically should be your certificate of lie or your hospital birth certificate with your feet prints on it to where you are standing upon that document or your Bible. You make a Bible entry. All that stuff that basically you are listening to uh, with uh, uh, David Clarence or Rob Ryder or uh, half these other uh, gurus out here and going to the county and recording us all at the county level and everything else and doing all that. And even I got fished into some of that. So I'm sorry for what I put up there about this. Because now I see where I was wrong. But at least I am man enough to say that I was wrong. These other guys still haven't figured out that they're wrong. And then when you start going in the court, you start having a different standing. And you describe yourself different and describe is you are unscribing. So when I look on the traffic ticket and I see what the exact charge was, do I go by whatever number number that they have on there? Is that what I use as the account number? Well, you've got to see what it says on there. What was, what was, how did they get you attached to that charge? How did... What did they use to write bonds against? They wrote on their false ID cell. No. There has to be some number there, a social oh, yeah, security they, they, number. Yeah, they did put the VIN number on there. Yeah, you're right. They, I think they put the okay. VIN number on there. Yeah, and then the so. VIN number, basically you have that registered in your name, don't you? In the, in the all caps name. It's in your name, okay? Just admit it, okay? You subscribed it into your name, your your dead person's name, but it's in a corporate name, okay? Don't argue about the, the semantics of it. It was a subscription. It's not the living individual. Yes, we know that. But you have to know how to describe... Or un, do an unscription of you from that document. Look up the definition of subscription and description in the dictionary. And see, that's what you've got to do. But in most cases... It's sometimes best to let sleeping dogs lie unless you have the time and you're out there to try and make a point in the endeavor and that you know that you are standing as protected when you do this because when you do some of this stuff, basically it's going to cause somebody to retaliate, okay? You cause somebody to lose their damn job, and basically they can't get another job, they may come gunning for you. 
may meet you in a back alley and put a knife into you, okay? you got to think about these things. Hey, Patrick, the same thing happened to me. What they do is proscribe you back in with the old license number and the old license plate number. They just proscribe you back in. Yeah. Even though you write letters and say you want out or whatever I did before. You know, yeah, I wrote letters to the director of DMV and high patrol commissioner, county sheriffs, and local police. They still prescribe yeah. you back in. Yeah, and the only way that you're going to get out of that system is to basically do the cancellation of debt. Right. And broker it with a B, a 1099B. Well, you can do that, but uh, basically if you put enough uh, cancellation or debt against the court and basically put that into the IRS, the IRS will come down upon that court and uh, say, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. They want their income tax. <clears throat> See, that's what the court hasn't been paying. We haven't been reporting on these courts, so they haven't been paying any income tax. That's why all the judges and everybody else uh, is getting all these kickbacks and basically sending money over to the Queen of England and uh, to uh, uh, the temple there in uh, uh, London town. To the money changers and they're getting away without paying any income tax that's on almost taxes that's on almost every court case isn't it hell yes yeah Patrick, did you say that? something about we could cancel the debt of the registration the bonds that they wrote that we would do that with a state yeah, you basically put it in. Uh, you make the state, the clerk of the court, in uh, care of, uh, like, uh, the state of Iowa, comptroller uh, of the state, okay, the treasury department of the state, okay? All bonds are written through uh, at the state level, uh, and even state banks, okay? They're processed through the insurance division of the state but the comptroller of the state is overseeing that just like the comptroller of the currency with the treasury so you put the charge in and basically you have care of uh, like state of Iowa treasury uh, dash comptroller I mean the registration of the vehicle uh the writing okay. bonds on that, uh, would that be the Department of Motor Vehicles or Yeah, the you state? would do it against the Department of Transportation, okay? Okay, that's the department that really handles that uh, driver's license and that certificate of title is the Department of Transportation for the state. So it would be like the California or the Iowa Department of Transportation. Uh, and then... Uh, you would put down underneath that care of uh, the state of Iowa or the state of California uh, treasury comptroller, okay? He's over the bonds. And see, so you're canceling the bonds. You're ordering the cancellation of those bonds. And then in block three, you're uh, putting your claim of interest in that, okay, which would be the new price value of that vehicle. You could also add in all payments that you've made out of your back pocket uh, for that vehicle, okay, uh, for uh, the licensing of that vehicle and everything in that regards, okay? Add that all in. And then that is what interest you have in that uh uh, item that is under bondage. That is your uh, uh, tidying, okay? Your tied up ings, okay? Your neutral assets. 
they're supposed to be neutral, but they can't touch the real asset. They can only touch an imaginary asset. Do we have to indemnify them in any way to be doing these no, things? No, no. You stay away from that, okay? They're okay. already under a bond of office. They're indemnified already. If they mess up, they have a liability bond that's there to protect them. If we take too much out of that liability bond, Basically, that insurance company isn't going to insure them any longer, and then they can't hold that office. Tom Patrick, are you still taking off-the-topic questions? Yeah. Um, what do you think is going to happen with the church in Rome? Basically, it's going to fizzle out one of these days when the people wake up and believe that uh, basically the church is all a fraud. Jesus never oh. set up a church. Moses never set up a church. Abraham never set up a church. Noah never set up a church. Did he? Did oh, they? Yeah. And what do you think about the IRS? Is that going to be getting stronger or morphing into something else? Well, if we utilize it, they will become our best friend. But we have to get the right information to them. They can only operate on information that they're given. And we haven't been giving them the information that they need to uh, go after these outfits. Does the FBI and the IRS work together? Some cases, yes. Some cases, no. They have their different uh, uh, fields of endeavor. They have their different jurisdictions. You would think that the uh, IRS would know all the tax fraud the banks and the courts are doing. Yes, but they can't operate on that unless they've been requested. Okay. Oh my God, that's that's amazing. Yes. They mm. can't operate until basically they've been asked to intervene. We gotta put in our orders. That's it. We haven't been given the orders to them to inform them of what we need their services for. That's what the Lord said. They, he said, ask, didn't he? <laughs> ask and you shall receive. Well, hopefully it's a good asking. <clears throat> I mean, isn't all of this stuff right in the Bible? I think it all is. I was talking with a guy who's in uh, federal law enforcement as a contractor, and he deals with marshals a lot. And yet he's very much, actually, he's interested in what you're doing, and I'm talking to him about it. He said that marshals can help us if we can fill out a writ of assistance. But that writ of assistance is normally issued by the court, but I, I'm not sure that they always have to be issued by the court or whether we could issue them. Like I told uh, basically about two or three weeks ago or whatever, somewhere back along that line, when I started talking about the PEO, the Principal Executive Officer, you have the power to issue a warrant yes, as a PEO, as okay. a people, okay? And we are magistrates also. Yeah. We have all of that capability. And see, that's where uh, the 11th Amendment, it took a lot of the powers away from the courts that they put in Article 3, Section 3 of the Constitution. Away from the courts. They, the courts were only left 
with basically operating with the the gross violations of the Ten Commandments of killing or raping or something along that lines to where you've caused physical injury to somebody. That's the only part that was left in uh, Article 3, Section 3 of the Constitution. All other courts of equity were put back into the people's hands. We're the court. And basically, we're making our ruling using the 1099-C. That's another C out there. Our court document, 1099-C. Let's see, we got court, we got cancel, we got uh, creditor, we got, uh, uh, I don't know, shit. Probably about 20 different words to begin with C, but all attached to that 1099C. Customer? Yeah. Claimant? Creditor? Okay, anybody else have any questions? Hopefully that one yesterday and today basically gets you on target uh, to what needs to be done. And I'm sorry if I offended any of these other gurus out here by uh, chewing on their butt, but basically they're wrong. I, I think we're going to be able to report to you what we've got sent in uh, this week, Patrick. Patrick, uh, another C for you is a 1099-C is a charge to the IRS, if I'm understanding you correctly. Yeah. And then yeah. they take care of the charge for us. Yeah. So complaint or claim. Yeah, we're putting complaint in. Complaint and claim, a, too. Yeah. It's a... We're putting... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I had a whole bunch of them listed down. I can't think of half of them right now. But I'm saying the C <laughs> is given the IRS the charge to go after these people to collect the taxes. Right. Yeah. You're you're informing the IRS now. Uh, yeah. That you're yeah. So you're charging the other party that uh, now they have to pay their taxes. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. We're giving them the leverage that they need to go after these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks, Patrick. Okay. Yes, Thanks, so this, this off-topic session was really a help, Patrick. Thank you. Okay. Gita, Gita put in the chat that you're really teaching us how to fish with this. Thank you. Fishing, okay. <laughs> gonna, yeah, and basically, yeah. Now you can go and understand the the Sermon on the Mount, the five loaves and the two fishes. We can feed ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Well, you're teaching us. You're teaching us how to fish. We just got to get out there and do it now. Yes. Yeah. Put okay. our best foot forward. Thanks a bunch, Patrick. Okay. Well, you guys take care. Sure. Talk to you maybe next week. We'll see. Thank okay. you, Patrick. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye. Patrick, you did. You got your 98.